Hey, I'm Mike Garrity. And I'm Megan Kolb. Welcome to another Three Wide Life. Today we're bringing you two superstars from the Cup Series who have very different backgrounds. You know, Mike, they don't only have different backgrounds, they have very different personalities, but in the end, they have a lot of wins under their belt. First, we're going to bring you the wild man, Clint Boyer. He's talking about his passion for dirt late model racing and how he became a team owner himself. We race in a Lucas Oil Dirt Late Model Series. Um, they race, that's a cool thing about it, no different than, than what we do on the cup side. They're all across the board on different racetracks. Some are a lot nicer than others, but uh, you know, they'll race 80 to 90 races a year all across the country. and. and the best late model drivers in the world, you know, I mean, it's it's no different than a cup series, it's just on a, on a different playing field. Um, very, very competitive, the tire game is something that, that we're not used to and, you know, watching the cup cars, I mean, there's 15 different compounds that they have to choose from every night and if you miss it, that's the difference between winning and losing, so, um, you know, it is for a younger driver, that's, that's the one thing that I think is, is very hard, uh, you know, to learn and pick up because you just can't afford to learn. You know, you've got to be able to capitalize, and if you don't, you ain't gonna be able to afford to go race. And so I always wanted to run a late model. I never got the opportunity. Somehow, I got a good phone call, and, and my career kind of surpassed the late model deal and went on into the, to the NASCAR ranks. But, um, so as soon as I guess I got some money, um, we were able to, to hire Shannon Babb, which was a, a Midwestern, you know, late model driver that was, a lot of fun the first year and, and just kind of took off from there. Uh, it's probably, I would say, you know, three or four years ago, we were having a lot of fun with it and I wanted to build it. I wanted to have a two car team where they could work together and, and you know, benefit each other. Obviously, I like to have fun, so I enjoy being around people that, that like the same, you know, but when it's time to be serious and put your helmet on, uh, I need somebody who can get the job done. Certainly, Jared Landers is that. Uh, just a, a, a maniac, you know, off, off the track. Um, but when he, when he gets his helmet on, he's, uh, well, he's still a maniac. He, he, he drives very hard, uh, but he's so much fun to watch. That's, that's another thing. You, and the dirt racing, there's, there's guys that are, you know, I, I would say a lot more calculating and, and, you know, run around the bottom. It's kind of boring. Jared will get up high and, and, you know, try to make a pass and try to move on. It might cost him three or four, might cost me a car, but uh, we were trying to go forward and that's what I like in a driver. And then Steve Francis is just, you know, he's the guy that's solid. You know he's gonna be there week in and week out and compete for a championship. And I think he can catapult Jared into that same, you know, format. My brother Casey and Chip and I, we never even had much of an office, so, uh, you know, we, we were able to, to get this. It was an old gym, and basically, if you were going to take a, a napkin and, and draw out a race shop on it, it was pretty much what I needed, you know. And, and so it's, I've always wanted to be have the haulers inside and be able to unload and wash right there. Uh, you never know what it's like outside, if it's going to be raining or cold. These guys race so much throughout the year, you just never know. And it's completely miserable to, to wash a car, wash the mud off a car in the rain. It sucks. So to be able to have it all under one roof and, and enjoy all this, I get to keep some of my toys in here and I like to work on them, but I'm always gone all the time. So I'll kind of start a project and leave a mess for them and then come back a month later and put it back together. When you, you know, you come here, you can still, you know, what I learned, you know, on the cup side and being around those guys, those engineers, I can still be here and, and you know, if they're working on something or have a problem, I feel like I can still help out. But it's just a breath of fresh air to be back around that style of racing that you grew up being around and no different than any level of racing it's all about the people if you don't enjoy the people you're around you're not going to have the success and i think we've got a good group of guys that enjoy racing and enjoy each other now that we've established clint boyer loves dirt late model racing we have to figure out how did he end up at michael walter racing leaving one of the biggest and most successful sprint cup series teams in history A guy that worked for my father um, raced motorcycles and he had a practice track behind uh, my dad's towing service and we used to go back there and watch Tony race all the time and practice and ride and one thing led to another. Andy, my older brother, got a, a PW50 for Christmas and that's what got us all rolling, you know. We started in the backyard riding around and riding around the sandbox. Next thing you know you found a board and stacked it up on the sandbox and you, you jump in the sandbox. and. You know, it's just, that's that's what we've always done since I can remember is race and go to the racetrack. So never in a million years would I have been able to look, you know, and, and tell you that I was, I'd be racing cars. 
it's almost funny how it all happened. I was working at a Goodyear tire store and my boss up and bought a car. We went dirt track racing and fell in love with it. I mean, all of us, we, that's the group I was hanging out with at the time. We went to the track and had so much fun. And before you know it, I was, I was building a car for myself and you know, with their help and went. And next thing you know, you won your first race. The next thing you know, you you know, getting a phone call from Richard Childers. It's just, it's unbelievable how quick that all happened. When, when that phone call happened, it was a little southern voice, you know, sweet as could be, asking if I'd take a phone call from Richard Childers. I'm like, yeah, right. And I'm looking around and look for the guy laughing, you know, behind a car and I couldn't find anybody. I was like, wait a minute here. And she kept, I was like, you know, kept going on trying to get it out of her who put her up to it. And she just stayed the course, about to the point where it got awkward. And, well, all right, lady, I'm, 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 I've had enough, you know, and she put Richard on. I've recognized his voice. And it was so loud in a body shop, I'm trying to talk to him. And I remember running out and getting in my truck so I could talk to him. He asked, you know, about me and said he'd been watching me and, and uh, you know, wanted me to come see him. At 6.30 the next morning, I was headed to North Carolina. From the phone call, very first phone call with Richard to, uh, you know, a nationwide championship. and and giving me an opportunity in my first cup race. I mean, without him, who knows what would have happened, you know? Um, everything that I have is, is because of, of him and, and taking an off, you know, a chance and giving me an opportunity. So, um, you know, that's, that's, that'll always be, you know, the, the one thing when you look back at your career or your life. I mean, that was, that was a game changer, you know, not only for myself, but my whole family. You know, to leave again, you know, I'm, I'm a loyal person and, and I'll never forget, you know, who gave me the opportunity. But, I mean, Richard's my neighbor. We're, we're still, you know, he lets me keep my playing in, in his hangar and still talk to him every week, you know, and, and see him. So, um, it just wasn't working, you know. He, he couldn't make it work on his end and there was no way I could make it on my end. And we were like, well, I guess we're fixing to turn another page in the book and, and certainly, you know, going through and talking to all the teams and having opportunities and, and options, you know, it was it was unbelievable how everything, whatever meeting I had, it all turned back around and all doors would open MWR. Almost to the point where you would fight it, like, you know, it can't be this simple of a decision, you know, I've, I've got to, I need to go out and explore the options and, and learn as much as I can and, and make the right decision. And it was like, whatever I did, just turn you right back in the same direction, you'd run into a roadblock and MWR was standing there waiting. You know, I, I remember I was worried sick. You know, before season started, I was like, what have I done? You know, I, I just left Richard Childress Racing, one of the biggest, you know, racing organizations in the sport um, for a young up and coming with it hasn't been proven and other than just a lot of talk hasn't really been able to produce anything uh, but man I'm telling you for the first time that I worked with Brian Patty it was like this is going to be good you know I had a very good feeling about him a, a ton of confidence we went down to Disney and, and did a test, a simple test before Christmas. I mean, this was still in the freaking out stages of what have I done, you know? We went down there and, and, and had a test. The car turned left at the end of the straightaway, just like it did in the old days with the RCR guys. D didn't feel any different. I mean, I, I was like, it's gotta be something different, you know? And same old cars, still four tires and a steering wheel and making the best out of your adjustments. And, and certainly he helped me do that in a big way this year. Uh, our engineers, you know, uh, Dax, and, and, and just everybody on that team is solid. You know, we were able to capitalize on a lot of things. Uh, you know, teams backing up, uh, laying people off. I mean, we we were we were a bunch of refugees, but there was there was a, a you know stacked credentials for that team, and, and I think uh, the results pretty much spoke for themselves. I mean, like I'm telling you. The very first time that I, I worked with Brian, I knew we were going to have success, and maybe not as much as we, we ended up having at the end, but uh, I knew it was going to be good. Thing, go out and win races for your sponsors. Um, you know, make the chase and compete for a championship. I mean, once you've established that, there is no turning back. You can't reset your goals. That's that is the goal. Uh, but unfortunately, that's the goal for Brad that just won it. For Jimmy Johnson's won it five times. 
uh, you know, Jeff Gordon, everybody. I mean, those, those guys are, are champions. They've won them before, and somehow we got to go out there and beat them. I started racing uh, go-karts when I was like eight-ish, something like that. And, um, you know, and it got, it started out as kind of a small local thing and then it got more serious over time. But a lot of it was obviously family-based and uh, my parents had a huge influence and friends of my parents had a huge influence and um, I just loved it. It was the only sport that I played that really kind of grabbed my attention and held it and, um, you know, it just became a passion. So from go-karts, I went uh, to the Allison Legacy Series, uh, three-quarter scale cup cars, and then on to the NASCAR Weekly Racing Series, and then to the Hooters Pro Cup Series, and then on to the NASCAR Busch Series. Basically, one of my, my primary sponsors through most of my racing career uh, was a guy named Bonk. We call him Bonk. His name's Larry Nichols. He was like a, another grandfather to me. He was my dad's partner. Uh, my father worked for him at High Point Nissan uh, as a mechanic and then a car salesman and then um, you know, he helped my dad start his business and he was just a tremendous influence in our family uh, and really helped uh, you know, my, my father get you know, as a mentor to my dad and helped him get a good start in life and helped him with his business and he, uh, he helped sponsor my racing career a lot of the ways and, you know, along the way and um, you know, he definitely helped us get going into the Bush Series but that was more than more of a task than he, he, he really wanted uh, long term. But, but essentially, in, in, in it really started in Hooters Cup, uh, even late models, but especially in Hooters Cup, we started getting outside sponsors, uh, EMP, uh, we did some stuff with the Army, but a lot of it was EMP. EMP had a huge uh, influence in, in the Hooters Cup and, and then going into the Bush program. They were phenomenal partners and became good friends. And, and um, you know, if it wasn't for them, you know, none of this, you know, may have happened. And, you know, I could say that for a lot of people, but, you know, obviously my, my parents, um, you know, Bunk, uh, EMP for helping sponsor those first few, uh, you know, those cars and years, and then, uh, and then moving on to Hendrick. It was a great opportunity. I mean, it, it was, you know, I think I was so young, I didn't even think of it as pressure. I just, I was just so happy and just going, you know, I mean, obviously you, it's definitely something you, you know, you know, you're in good equipment, you know, you got to win, you want to win, but, um, but it was, I don't know if it was an intimidating opportunity, but it was definitely, it was a huge opportunity. I, and I, I recognize that and leaving Hendrick was a, a very difficult decision and it involved a lot of things personally and professionally, um, you know, so it was not an easy decision, but you know, it was for, at the time with everything going on, you know, it was the right decision, and, and I learned so much from going to Red Bull and helping build that program, um, you know, personally and professionally. Like, it, I really grew as a person and as a race car driver. Uh, I learned a lot, and I think hopefully those lessons will go on to help me win a championship one day. Um, but it was, it was tough, you know, I mean, uh, Hendrick was a special organization. It was and still is, and, um, but, but uh, you know, the, the person that hired me was there, was, was no longer there. You know, it, was, it, was, it had changed a lot. It was educational. It was it was it was tough, uh, challenging, frustrating at times, but very rewarding. Um, you know, I had so much fun. Uh, you know, working with Red Bulls, and I mean, they're an incredible partner. We, you know, I got to experience and do so many things. And you know, I think be, being a part of a new organization, I learned so much. Being on the ground level, um, helping to to hire and people, and 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 being a part of the organization and being more than just a driver and and then and then it was so rewarding to go on to 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 win those polls and win those races and make the chase um, knowing where we had come from and where we started it was probably one of the most rewarding things in my career uh, but it was difficult I mean no doubt it was at times it was it was frustrating and obviously them you know after everything we'd built them deciding to leave the sport was frustrating uh, but but it doesn't take away from how rewarding it was when we were succeeding after just such a short period of time.
At the height of his career and just when he started winning at Red Bull, Brian Vickers was sidelined with an injury that would change his career path in racing forever. You know, it, I mean, it had had a huge effect on my career. I mean, I, obviously, I, there's really no way of knowing how big of an effect, positive or negative, um, you know, because we only know this path, you know, and, and we don't know the alternative path. But, uh, you know, being 26, I guess, at the time and walking down the street, healthy, athlete, you know, great shape, and then all of a sudden not being able to breathe. I mean, that was a personally a very difficult emotionally thing to deal with, and, and it was an eye-opener uh, how... I mean, you know life is short and it's precious and, and it can be gone quickly, but till it, till it hits you smack in the face, you don't, you know, I don't think you appreciate it, especially when you're young. And, um, you know, I probably had more of an understanding and appreciation for that because of losing, you know, dear friends at an early age, but till it happens to you, it's just not the same. Um, you know, so it had a huge impact on me personally and how I look at life and view life and live life. Professionally, it, it, again, it had a big impact. I think 2010 was going to be you know, our best year. We just came out of winning races and polls and making the chase. Um, I felt that we were, you know, gearing up to race for a championship. Um, and then all of a sudden I was sidelined, you know, and out of the car. And it, you know, so it obviously had an effect on my career. Things were different by the time I got back in the car. Red Bull's, you know, attitude towards, you know, their goals in NASCAR had changed and shifted. They decided to exit the sport, you know, I don't know if me being out of the car had a had a role in that. I, I have no idea. Um, I'm sure if 2010 had gone as planned and we were battling for a championship, maybe they made a di different decision. I don't know. But ultimately, you know, things happen for a reason, and I learned a lot from it. I don't regret, you know, you know things that happen. I don't. I'm not frustrated about it. Um, you know, I embrace it. it. It led me to where I'm at now in life, and. I'm very happy where I'm at now. I'm at, you know, two great organizations racing for group, two great teams, um, you know, and, and I've got, again, new friends through the experience and, uh, you know, and, and just it, it's been, um, it was a very educational experience for me, I, I guess is the best way to put it. And, I, and you know, I, I grew a lot as a person, personally and professionally, even though there were a lot of negatives to it. It was a very painful experience um, on both fronts. Yeah, I was going through a lot of making, making some tough decisions and there was some opportunities to go full-time racing. Do I do that? Do I stay with the team that I feel so well with and so comfortable with and run so well with, which is the 55 and Mark, and obviously that's a part-time opportunity. You know, how do I complement that with something to get some more experience? Racing in Europe was a phenomenal opportunity. I would have absolutely jumped at that again, um, probably in a more, more full-time role uh, if I did the, the 55 again. And then the opportunity with Gibbs came along, which was which was perfect. You know, it was uh, I wanted to be back in NASCAR. I mean, ultimately my goal is to win a Cup championship. I, I I loved racing in Europe, but but this is where I want to be long term. This is where my goal is. So to be able to race for Gibbs, I mean, what an organization, you know, and what they've accomplished in their nationwide team and, and their Cup teams, and obviously to be able to stay with Toyota. So you know, the, the puzzle just fit perfectly, and it made sense to me. And um, so I jumped at it. Uh, you know, had that not come along, I probably would have still done the opportunity with the 55 because I just felt like it was my best chance to perform at the very best I could in the Cup Series. Um, you know, and then what I what went along with that, I, you know, who knows? Um, maybe I'd have done some more racing overseas. I don't know. I, I wanted a race. I would have I would have been in a race car one way or the other. The question is just, um, you know, what what car I would have been in, but. Once the Gibbs opportunity come along, to me it was very clear. You know they're a phenomenal organization. They they um, they've got two great owners with Michael and Rob. They they I think they make a perfect pair. They both bring some incredible qualities to the table, and they're both different qualities, but that's what makes them great together. They complement each other well. Um, they've hired great people within that organization. They've built a, a solid foundation. And it shows, you know, I mean, they're, they're attracting more and more talent. They've got, you know, they already have an incredible staff and, you know, Ty and, and, and Scott and so many people, we've already talked about Rodney, but, but you see, you know, they're, they're building depth in that team and that's what it takes to win championships and they're, they're almost there. I mean, I think they're there in a lot of ways.
Well, I hope so. I mean, that's that sounds promising, and and I hope that's the case, and I believe it to be. You know, as of right now, that could change. I've learned the hard way that no matter what you think is going to happen, there's no guarantees on that. But you know, my goal is just to go out and just do the best I can every week, have fun doing it, and put myself in the best position possible for 2014. Nothing's been determined yet. You know, I'd love nothing more than to continue um, to build on the success we've had in the 55 with that team, um, and to be an MWR and Toyota and. And uh, you know that would—that's definitely the top of the list for goals. Thanks for watching another episode of Free Wide Life. It's cool to see some of our favorite drivers having so much success in our sport. Until next time, check out our Facebook, our Twitter, and our website. We're constantly updating them with fresh, cutting-edge content. And until your next race, keep on living the Three Wide Life. At the height of his career, and just when he started winning at Red Bull, Brian Vickers was sidelined with an injury that would change his career path in racing forever.
how much success in our sport. Until next time, check out our Facebook, our Twitter, and our website. We're constantly updating them with fresh, cutting-edge content. And until your next race, keep on living the three-wide life.